Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So last week I was in Salt Lake City for a conference slash training and I will have some very interesting topics to share with you later. But this video is about the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine. And I know many of you find my channel through the first Novavax video I made almost a whole year ago. And since then, except for my American viewers, most of my viewers' countries have already given a yes to the Novavax vaccine. And on June 7, 2022, the US FDA Vaccine Advisory Committee finally reviewed and voted to agree the Novavax vaccine provided benefits outweigh the risks. Novavax has also published their Phase 3 efficacy and safety data in adults in the US and Mexico in the New England Journal of Medicine back in February 2022. And so I'm not going to spend too much time on how this vaccine worked and you can check out one of my older videos to refresh your memory. But instead, in this video, I'm going to answer some of the most concerning questions that were brought up by the vaccine committee during the meeting so that you can make an informed decision if you are still considering getting this vaccine. And by the way, I did a poll at the end of April on my channel and 21% of the 669 people who voted would like to take the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine. Now, the reported efficacy of the Novavax vaccine is on the Alpha variant, and now we basically only see the Omicron. So does the Novavax vaccine work against the Omicron? And that is the first question. And sadly, Novavax did not present the efficacy against the Omicron variant in the meeting, and also we don't know how much a third dose would increase the efficacy. Now instead, they showed some immune response data based on the detectable antibody levels. The booster was given six months after the primary series, that means the two dose, and it boosted the antibody levels by 3.5 fold against the Omicron variant. And by this time, many people have already recovered from COVID-19. So the question is, would the Novavax have any effect on these recovered people or how much effect? The company reported that 7% of the 30,000 participants in the U.S.-Mexico study had had COVID-19 before the study and was not counted in the efficacy calculation. Now, this graph shows that their vaccine can induce a strong neutralizing antibody response in seropositive participants, meaning those people who had recovered from COVID-19. The third question is, what about allergic reactions? Now, we have seen a number of severe allergy reactions to the mRNA vaccines, likely due to the polyethylene glycol in them. Now, let's look at a product information sheet. Now, based on this product information sheet from the EU, the Novavax vaccine does not contain polyethylene glycol and the U.S. product is going to be the same, so it will not have polyethylene glycol. And the most commonly reported allergic reaction in the phase 3 studies were rashes, swelling, and mild inflammation of the skin. Now, they did not see any anaphylaxis or severe allergic reactions during the trial period. Now, one of the most concerning and acknowledged rare side effect of the COVID-19 vaccines is the myocarditis risk. And what do we know about that? In fact, just a few days before the Vaccine Advisory Committee met, the FDA questioned the four cases of myocarditis that occurred within 20 days of receiving the Novavax vaccine. The company responded that they observed a very similar rate of myocarditis in both the vaccine and the placebo, which is just normal saline, and there is not enough data to establish a causal relationship between myocarditis and the Novavax COVID-19 vaccine. During the meeting, the discussion also went on 
mentioning myocarditis was not exclusive to the mRNA vaccines or vaccines containing the spike protein. And for example, there were reports of myocarditis from smallpox vaccinations, and there's still no consensus on why myocarditis happens from the COVID-19 vaccines. And so what about the durability? Do they last? Now, the antibody response wanes over time, just like any other COVID-19 vaccines. So it's likely that it will need a booster in the near future. And in fact, they're already studying that and preparing those data. But the company also showed that two doses provide strong T-cell responses that are important for protection against severe disease. What about logistics and manufacturing? Everyone in the U.S. that want this vaccine have been waited so long. So what do we know about that? Now, in fact, during the clinical trial period, two different companies made the Novavax vaccine. And now all the commercial doses are made from the India Serum Institution. The companies also did studies to confirm early locks are comparable to the commercial lot produced by the institution. Now, since it is now not being made in the U.S., it will take some time to get to the arms of Americans because of transportation logistics. During the meeting, some committee members also asked what it would take for the Novavax vaccine to be fully licensed. Even though the company published its clinical trial data months ago, it didn't have manufacturing ability at the beginning of the pandemic. And they had to make sure they could make the product the same way again and again. They need to show consistency in vaccine production logs before they can get a full license. And without the EUA, they would never be able to sell and produce enough vaccines to show product consistency. Some parents may be wondering what about this protein-based Novavax vaccine use in children. India has already authorized the Novavax vaccine use for 12 to 17 years old. The company is also doing a booster trial for adolescents and expect to file EUA very soon in the U.S. Currently, there aren't any words of it being used in children less than 12 years old. But what we know is that the same matrix M, the adjuvant that is used to boost the immune response, is also used in a malaria vaccine and is safe in children as young as 5 months old. So if or when FDA granted its EUA use and the CDC makes a recommendation, what are the plans for follow-up? During the meeting and other earlier interviews, the company said they are already making an Omicron-specific vaccine, but they're not sure if there's a real need. But if there is one, they will be ready. They are also studying the vaccine in pregnancy and have other follow-up studies to monitor real-world efficacy and safety data. In terms of logistics, they are establishing new manufacturing sites in Europe and making additional manufacturing partnerships in South Korea and Japan. Now let's have a final takeaway. Now the clinical trial data from Novavax appears to be comparable to the two mRNA vaccines, but it is not superior. The company did put up a poll result from February showing that up to 73% of Americans want COVID-19 vaccines from a more traditional method. But since so many people have gotten the Omicron in the past few months, I don't think there is an immediately huge need for this vaccine, at least not until the colder season in North America. I'm sure you probably have more questions than the ones that I've covered in this video. So please leave the questions in the comment section so that I can answer them with the best of my ability. Now, remember, I don't work for the industry or the government, so I don't have any insider stories. That is all for the quick update on the Novavax COVID vaccine status in the US. Now, thanks again for watching and all of your support. And I hope to see you in my next video. And meanwhile, please 
Take care, stay safe, stay healthy. Bye.